All right, folks, so in this video, we're going to talk about some software or an image that you can run on your Raspberry Pi. The image is called HamPi, and it's version 1.0, and it's by W3DJS, and it's a comprehensive ham shack, essentially, uh, from a software or computing standpoint that you can run in your shack. We're going to install it on this Raspberry Pi 4 that I just got. This is the 8 gigabyte version, and I put it together in this box uh, last night, yesterday, something like that. Anyhow, I've been using Raspberry Pis um, as part of my ham shack for about two years now. So you can imagine my excitement when this product came along and I saw that it was something that uh, I could take advantage of. I wanted to say, if you like this video, go ahead and click the thumbs up or subscribe. It really helps with the discoverability of the content and it helps other people like you find the content. All that said, let's go ahead and get started. All right, folks, so I wanted to go through some websites or some resources that may uh, come in helpful for you while you do your HamPi installation. So the first one is from uh, Northwest Digital Radio, and it is a release announcing version uh, 1.0 and uh, support for the Draws hat. I don't have the Draws hat. I'm not planning on getting one, but uh, this is from Dave Slaughter, uh, W3DJS, the guy who put together HamPi. And uh, he has some information here, uh, the most important thing being the download links that you can use to go ahead and, and get this particular piece of software. I also want to show you the GitHub page, and again, links will be below. And then this is where you can come and get information, see some files, look at the README, you can see what kind of software is installed um, as part of this image. And then here is actually one of the Google Drive sites, and there's some information here about how you can contribute. Uh, there's a torrent file. Um, this is the file that you want to download. It's hampi underscore v 1.0.tar. And that means that this file is compressed using a tar file format. We're going to cover that in a couple of minutes. Um, how to flash, licensing information, readme, just important stuff that you probably want to take a look at. Now I downloaded this tar file to Windows 10. And in order to untar it, I needed to use this program here, WinZip. I don't know if you have it or not. Uh, I do believe it's licensed, but you can get like a 21-day evaluation copy and uh, use that. We are going to use this program, SD Memory Card Formatter, and um, I use this. It's uh, You can install it on Windows, you can install it on Mac, and I use it for any work that I do with SD cards. I've used it for years. It's a fantastic piece of software. And then finally, we're going to write our image file um, with Belina Etcher. We use this to copy our, our um, image to our SD card. <clears throat> just scrolling down here real quick, you can uh, install this on Windows, you can install it on Mac OS, and you can install it on Linux. Again, this is another fantastic piece of software. I've been using it for a couple years now, and I love it. Okay, let's get on with it. I'm pretty sure a 16 gigabyte micro SD card is required. I happen to have this 128 laying around, and because I'm planning on using this image long term, I wanted to have plenty of storage for anything that I might need. So we're using the SanDisk Ultra. All right, folks, so I downloaded the tar file, I guess is the right way to call it, and I saved it to this folder on my desktop called HamPi. And here you can see HamPi underscore v 1.0.tar. And I installed WinZip like we talked about, so now it's recognizing it as a WinZip file, and it's just under 4 gigs. When I double click on this, WinZip will open up, and uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say I don't want to register. I'm going to use the evaluation version. And then I'm just going to say unzip the files to HamPi. I'm not going to do that now because I've already unzipped it. After unzipping it, I get this folder, HamPi 1.0 by W3DJS. So I open that folder up, and then when I'm in here, I see another zip file, and it is the HamPi v v1.0img.zxz. <clears throat> and so I unzip that, and then right above it, you see the output, which is that image file. The image file is what we're going to write to our SD card. I'm just going to double click on this. I'm going to say use evaluation version. And right here I just click yes to unzip the files to HamPi v.1 by W3DJS. We're not going to do that now because obviously I've already done it. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to connect my SD card. Or I'm going to plug the SD card, SD micro card into my computer. So let me do that now. Okay, now that my SD micro card is plugged into my computer, I'm going to come over here to SD card formatter. I'm going to double click on that. I'm going to pick yes. 
And then here it's asking me to select a card. It's already chosen F, which is the only option available on my computer. Yours may be different. So I'm going to come down here and you, believe me, you want to make sure you pick the right card. Otherwise, you're going to be in a little bit of trouble. Uh, here you can see it's 119 gigabytes. That's how I know it's the right one. I'm just going to pick quick format and then I'm going to click the format button. Here it says it's going to erase all the data on the card. I'm not even sure what's on there, so I'm just going to say yes. And we're done. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to close this out. The next thing I'm going to do is come over to Belina Etcher. I'm going to open that up. And it's probably going to tell me that I'm a version or two behind. Oh, and it says select an image. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pick an image right now. So I go to the desktop, I go to HamPy, I go to the unzip folder, and then I pick the IMG file that we extracted from this XZ file, and I hit open. Then it's going to ask me to select my target. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to pick the generic storage device, USB device. I'm going to go ahead and select it, and I'll know it's selected when this checkbox turns green, and then I'm going to go ahead and click continue. And then I'm going to click flash. Now here it says attention, generic drive generic storage device USB, and it gives me all this information, is unusually large for an SD card or USB stick. Are you sure you want to flash this drive? And I'm going to go ahead and pick it, continue. Now it's asking me, do you want to allow this app to make changes to your device? Yes. And now it's starting. We're going to come back once this is done. All right, and so now we are at 99% done flashing. It's finishing, validating. And this is gonna take a few minutes as well. We're almost done validating. It's unmounting the drive right now. I'm gonna go over here and click cancel. And the next thing we're gonna do is we are going to insert the micro SD card into our Raspberry Pi. So with the micro SD card inserted into the Raspberry Pi, I go ahead and I boot it up. And we're doing a screen capture here with a video capture card, so we should be able to see everything. And it's booting up, which is a good sign. So the first thing we get is a warning that the SSH is enabled and the default password for Pi has not been changed. Now what's interesting is, is this logged in automatically. There's also a note here about the software being QSLware, and then you can send a QSL card to the creator, W3DJS. We need to go through a quick configuration here. And it's important to set your country for Wi-Fi purposes. I set my language for American English, and then I want to set my keyboard for US. That's a big deal because one time I uh, set a Raspberry Pi up and I had it set on a UK keyboard and it was very confusing. So go ahead and click next and it's going to set your location. After the location is set, we're prompted to change the password. I'm not very creative, so I just set it to the default Raspberry. And that way I won't get prompted again. And I won't forget it when I try to log in in a week. I hit next and it asked me some questions about the setup screen. Apparently there could be a black bar and the screen should fit the border. And I just hit next. Now I'm going to set up my Wi-Fi network. After that, we'll come back and finish up the configuration. We're prompted to update the software. We hit yes. This is going to take a little while. I should say we hit next. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to speed it up. Uh, this has got to download some packages, do some installations, and uh, like I mentioned, it could be a little while. After the update, we reboot the system, and then we notice the QSLware notice pops up automatically. So that's probably going to do that on every boot up. We also get the password issue with the SSH being set to Raspberry. There's a README file on the desktop, and let's take a quick look at that. This appears to be the same README file that we looked at in the zip file archive earlier in the video. So it's pretty handy to have this on the desktop. Also, if you have any questions about any of the software that gets installed, you can find it here, and there's also a link to the, to the website where you can download or get more information on that particular software. I find this to be very handy. Let's go ahead and close out of this. And then there is some HamPy license information. We're just gonna take a quick look at this. I'm not gonna read through it. You can read through it and decide if you wanna to agree to the license or not. 
And then there's also a PDF called Give Back. And this appears to be a charity that Hampi uh, creator W3DJS is involved in. is for Father's Rights, and it deals with issues that divorced families with children face. So if you're feeling generous and you want to do something nice, go ahead and make a donation. And then there's a document about activating your draws hat. We don't have one, so we're not going to fool with that. Under Ham Radio in the menu, you can see all the various applications grouped by similar types. You have antenna analyzers, calculators, APRS, you have the FL Digi Suite, logging software, Morse code software, uh, PSK software. Uh, this is what I'm most excited about is the software to find radio, and we'll do a video on that separately. Um, there's some stuff for passing your test or training, some weak signal work like WJSTX, uh, and I can't, I can't read that. <clears throat> Blue DV, I want to play around with that too. Chirp, we use that all the time, right? So anyhow, this is a fantastic set of software. Uh, I'm really looking forward to being able to try this out and play around with it. It should make a nice addition to the ham shack. I'm not sure if I'm going to use this as my base uh, Raspberry Pi and then take the other one and make it portable, or use this one as a portable Pi, or maybe use this one for everything. VNC is set up and installed, so you can remote control out of the box, which is handy. You'll just need the IP address. One last thing I want to do is I want to open a command prompt and I just want to run an update uh, command and for that we're going to write sudo space apt dash get update and this will update the repositories on the Raspberry Pi in the event that they weren't updated when we did the system update and it really does look like they were so that shouldn't be an issue. Just to make sure I'm going to issue a sudo apt get upgrade command and that will install or finish installing any software that was left uninstalled. And I run that and then there is nothing to upgrade. So we're done. With that said, I'd like to thank everybody for watching the video. Really do appreciate it. I'd like to thank uh, the HamPi creator W3DJS for putting out a fantastic piece of software. As I mentioned, we're going to do more videos on this uh, HamPi installation in the future. Today's was really just showing how to get up and running and complete the installation. If you have any questions, go ahead and post them below and I'll do my best to answer them. Thanks everybody. I really appreciate it.